So by now we've all had a decent amount of time to mess around with various weapons and setups here in Modern Warfare. The sheer number of possibilities when it comes to making a solid class this year honestly seems infinite with the amount of customization options we have thanks to the gunsmith. But so far through my time on the game leveling up and testing out new weapons, I think I've found 5 class setups in specific that ultimately feel really solid all around. So today we're breaking them all down so you guys can try them out and hopefully find the same success that I've found when using them. But before we jump into that, if you are new here, I've got the latest Call of Duty news and intel going up each and every day. So if you want to stay on top of that stuff, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on, that way you'll always know when I upload a new video. Also, if you guys enjoy this one, let me know by dropping a like rating on it as it would be much appreciated. And now let's get into 5 classes that honestly are on the verge of being overpowered here in Modern Warfare. Now, the first setup that we have here today is going to be my sleeper setup, if you will. You and I both know there are some weapons that the community thinks are a bit too strong, but I do not see the Kilo 141 coming up in those conversations all that frequently. And just being honest for my time spent using this Kilo setup, I really do think this is my go-to gun in the game. Over the M4, over the SCAR, over the MP5, or anything else for that matter, this is really my favorite setup so far. So on my Kilo 141, the first attachment I end up using is the Syngard Arms 16.6 inch SOCOM barrel, as this attachment ends up increasing the damage range, the bullet velocity, and the recoil control in exchange for a slightly slower aim down sight speed. So right away, three solid pros for one minimal con is definitely a good trade if you ask me. After that, I use the Cronin LP945 Mini Reflex. This attachment is a bit more preference based. You may like how it looks and feels, you may not, that is totally up to you. But personally, I'm not really a huge fan of the Kilo's iron sights, and the LP945 Mini Reflex is a nice optic that, to me at least, makes it a bit easier to stay on target at any given range. Then I've got the Operator Foregrip, which adds a bit of recoil control in exchange for a slightly slower ADS speed, and ultimately that ADS in speed is hardly affected in my own opinion. I then also use the 50 round mags ammunition attachment. Honestly, I just prefer not having to reload if I run into a larger group of enemies, and would rather be able to focus on engaging for a longer amount of time thanks to that increased ammo count. And then I also use the stippled grip tape which increases the ADS speed and the sprint to fire speed in exchange for a decrease in aiming stability. So with all five of those attachments on this setup, you can see that on the stat sheet the accuracy and the range get bumped up a bit and the mobility and the control dip down ever so slightly. But honestly, this setup is an absolute laser. It feels like it has next to no recoil, it kills incredibly quickly and you don't feel too bogged down despite the mobility being lowered. Like I said, this setup in and of itself is definitely my go-to, but of course it would not be a complete class setup if it didn't include a secondary, a perk setup, and some equipment as well. So in the interest of time I'll just preface now, I run the same exact secondary, perks, and equipment on all of my classes, and it's really just the primary that changes from spot to spot. So after this setup the following 4 ones will just be based around the primary weapon since obviously there's really no need to just rehash the same setup over and over if the only main change is coming in the form of the primary. Anyways, for my secondary I end up using an SMG pretty much all the time. So yes, I do use overkill in my perk 1 spot and honestly there despite using a whole perk to give me a second primary weapon, I don't actually find myself using a secondary all that much. But when I do, I am so glad it's an SMG and not a pistol because the SMG has saved my life a handful of times. As of right now, my go-to has been the P90. Frankly, I haven't messed around with it all that much. I think I'm only at weapon level 15 right now. I can't actually tell everything on my screen says it's weapon level 0. Kind of an annoying bug, but it is what it is. Anyways, being that this is a secondary, it's not getting a ton of action, maybe one or two kills a match depending on how aggressive I'm playing, but when it does come into play, it is incredibly useful to have. I've currently got the 1MW laser, the Viper reflex sight, the granulated grip tape, the stippled grip tape, and the frangible wounding perk on it, however that is pretty much always changing whenever I unlock new attachments, but frankly even just having the stock weapon as a secondary feels just fine. Like I said, I would much rather take that over a pistol pretty much any day of the week. Now jumping on over to the perks, obviously perk 1 is overkill as I mentioned. 
Perk 2 is going to be Ghost because that personal radar and UAV spam is still at an all-time high, so being able to be shrouded on the radar when I'm flanking and rushing around is definitely a solid bonus to have. And then I also use Shrapnel as that gives me an extra lethal grenade, and it causes explosive damage to delay health regen, which for my playstyle works incredibly well. I really enjoy having that extra grenade that is super useful when attacking a flag or pushing a power position, and if I deal any damage with said nades, the enemy's regen is going to be slowed which really increases my chances of cleaning up that kill. Speaking of grenades, I like to use the frag, that's really just personal preference. And then for my tactical, I use stim, which allows me to heal manually as I much prefer being able to control my own healing rather than having to wait for health regen to kick in. So that is setup number one and like I said, it is definitely my go-to as of right now. Next up, it really wouldn't be an overpowered classes video if I did not bring up the M4A1 in its current state. However, I'm going to put an asterisk here because I expect the M4A1 to get nerfed here pretty soon, so this setup might only be as good as it is for a short while longer. Anyways, on this setup, I start off with the FFS 12.4 inch Predator Barrel, which comes with a built-in suppressor so it has added sound suppression, and it also helps increase the aim down sight speed as well, in exchange for a slight drop off in bullet velocity. Then I've got the Forge TAC CQS stock on there which also increases the ADS speed and slightly decreases the aiming stability. The Operator Foregrip is my underbarrel attachment of choice for this and it's got that added recoil control and minimal decrease to the ADS speed. The 50 round mags also come into play on this setup for the same reason as before. And finally I've got the stippled grip tape on the M4 as well as it helps bump up that mobility by a bit with its increased ADS and sprint to fire speeds. So with this setup you end up losing a little range and a little control, but the M4 in its current state doesn't really suffer from those drawbacks all that much because it really has next to no recoil in the first place and its damage range is pretty solid. Where this setup shines though is its mobility and accuracy as the recoil is almost completely non-existent and you can rush around with this setup quite a bit thanks to your ADS and sprint to fire speeds being boosted. Moving on, setup number 3 is based around the Odin, and this is definitely an underrated weapon if you ask me. Now the Odin is actually the strongest assault rifle in the entire game, however it suffers from a slower fire rate, a smaller magazine size, and a decent bit of recoil, but we are actually able to combat most of that on this setup. Here I've got the factory 810mm barrel which increases the damage range, the bullet velocity and the recoil control in exchange for a slower ADS speed and overall movement speed. I've also got the LP945 mini reflex on the Odin as well. The iron sights just aren't the most convenient at times so I do prefer to have that optic on there. And once again I've also got the operator foregrip there too. This time around I have the 25 round mags attachment on there because despite the slow fire rate that the Odin has, it still runs out of ammo relatively quickly, so those extra few bullets are a nice added benefit there. And then lastly for the Odin, I run the stippled grip tape once again for all the same reasons as before. Now this weapon's accuracy and range increase a decent chunk with this setup, whereas the mobility drops down ever so slightly. But what I absolutely love about this gun is the fact that it's like a 3 shot kill or sometimes a 2 shot kill to the head at pretty much every single range. This thing melts when you hit your shots and it honestly surprised me when I first tried it out so I recommend you do too to see how you like it. Setup number 4 is going to focus on the PKM light machine gun and this is another setup that honestly surprised me. If you remember the Titan back in Black Ops 4 during its prime where it didn't really feel that much like an LMG, yeah that is basically the PKM here. This thing is without a doubt the best LMG in the entire game. It's a spray and pray machine to put it simply. Now on the PKM, I run the 18.2 inch compact barrel, which increases the ADS speed and the movement speed, so that's pretty helpful when running around with this thing, since it is an LMG at the end of the day. Here I also use the Viper Reflex just for a change of pace, that's another optic I do enjoy using. I've got the Operator Foregrip once again, and the Stippled Grip Tape too. And lastly, I use the Forge Tac Ultralight Stock, which increases the aim walking movement speed. So overall, the mobility and the accuracy of the weapon increase while the control decreases just a bit. But honestly, this thing has really low recoil even in its stock form, and with the increased mobility you get, you are able to run around a lot more with it, making it feel more like an LMG assault rifle hybrid. Then finally, setup number 5 may come as a bit of a surprise to a few of you, because we're using the AK-47. And here, mainly I consider the AK to be on the verge of being overpowered, because of its ability to shred at long distances. 
Tap firing is a must with this weapon at extreme ranges, but if you hit your shots, this gun melts. Simple as that. Now here I'm rocking the 23 inch RPK barrel for the increased damage range, bullet velocity and recoil control, the LP945 mini reflex and the stippled grip tape once again, the 40 round mags for a little extra ammo, however you could always swap that out for an under barrel to help with recoil if you'd like, then finally the FFS close quarters stock for increased ADS speed. So as you'll notice there are no decreases in any of the stats displayed. And instead, the only changes come in the form of increases to the overall accuracy and range, which allow this weapon to have less recoil and to be even more effective at longer distances, resulting in a setup that is surprisingly useful considering just how rough the AK-47 is in its base form. Now, with all of that being said, those are five class setups here in Modern Warfare that are honestly borderline overpowered. If you guys enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like rating on it as it would be much appreciated. And of course, if you are new here and you want to stay up to date with everything going on in the world of Call of Duty, including all the latest news and intel, updates and leaks, and pretty much everything else in between, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. That way you'll always know when I post a new video. As always, be sure to use code IMMORTAL on all G Fuel, Control Freak, and Respawn products. All of those links can be found down below. And once again, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.